Good morning and welcome to Pilgrim Congregational United Church of Christ here in Lansing, Michigan. We are located at 125 South Pennsylvania Avenue. This is June 27th of 2021. Our gospel lesson for today is about Jairus' daughter and the woman with a hemorrhage. The stories are about desperate people seeking healing and how the touch of God provides healing. May God touch our hearts this day. Let us begin by calling upon God's Spirit to be with us. Let us pray. Come, dear God, and be with us in this time of worship. Let your Spirit touch our hearts and our spirits today. We have felt your touch before, and we desire to feel it again. When we have been anxious, you have soothed our minds. When we have been confused, you have calmed our thoughts. When we have been upset, you have eased our feelings. When we have felt despair, you have lifted us up with strength of spirit and hope. We desire to feel the power of your presence, giving us the will and guidance to do what you ask of us. May we witness to your love for all people in what we say and do. Let your spirit give us life and help us to give life to others. Bless us with the power of your presence. Amen. There are times when we are shackled by heavy burdens and we are overwhelmed with guilt and shame. We call upon God to help us through the hard times and to give us forgiveness. And we feel Jesus touch our hearts. The presence of God changes us as we are touched by love. Listen to the Bill Gaither song, He Touched Me. who had suffered for many years touches the hem of Jesus' cloak. She touches more than his cloak. She touches his power to heal, and the woman is made well. Jesus senses that power has gone out of him, and he calls upon the person to reveal themselves. The woman comes fearfully forward and confesses. Jesus calls the woman daughter and tells her that her faith has made her well. He bids her to go in peace. We're all wounded and broken in some way. We're all in need of healing of some kind. We desire to have contact with Jesus so we may receive healing 
and become whole. We approach Jesus like the woman with fear and trembling. But after we have been touched, we know that he is kind and compassionate and wants to make us whole. As we confess our brokenness and our desire to be healed, Jesus lovingly affirms us and bids us to continue on our faith's journey in peace. So we open our hearts to God's spirit that we may be empowered to do God's will. We ask to be healed. We ask to be empowered. We ask to be your spirit-filled people. Amen. This song we are about to sing declares how faithful God is in caring for us. God provides for our needs and is filled with compassion for those who suffer. God forgives our wrongdoings and gives us peace of mind. As we stay close to God, we have strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Join us in singing, Great is Your Faithfulness, number 423 in the New Century Hymnal. Psalm 130, verses 1 through 8. The psalmist touches upon that feeling of overwhelming emotion that can come upon us in our fear or desire. We feel that we are in over our heads, and we know that only God has the power to bring us out of the pit we have fallen into. We pray that God hears our desperate cry for help and comes to our aid. 
God alone has the power to redeem us, so we wait expectantly for God's steadfast love to save us. Here's Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope is in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. This ends our first scripture reading. Let us pray. Dear God, reach out to us in your steadfast love and redeem us. Our souls wait for your deliverance. Our spirits wait for you to strengthen them. We wait to find healing and wholeness in your presence. We know that we have not done all the things we should have done. We seek your forgiveness. We know that we have not always been on the right path. We ask for your guidance and direction to make our lives fulfilled and complete. We desire to walk in your ways and share in your love. Touch our lives with your grace so that we may touch the hearts of those who need you. Breathe new life into us empowered by your great love. We pray in the name of the great physician, Jesus Christ, amen. When we realize the tremendous gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ, we are in awe of God's generosity and love. We wonder who we are, what makes us so special, that God would care about us and die for us. God is so great and we are so small. We did not earn God's gift of salvation because of any personal status or merit gained by our good deeds. It is <clears throat> God's nature to love us because God created us and we belong to God. Listen to our confession in the song, Who Am I? Because of who I am, but because of what 
what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind still you. Catch me when I'm falling And you've told me who I am I am yours I am yours I am yours The scripture lesson for today is from Mark chapter 5 verses 21 through 43, and I'll do a short introduction. Our gospel lesson for today has a story within a story, but both of the stories are about healing. Jesus is in Galilee, preaching his message and healing people of diseases and demons. Large crowds are following him. After Jesus has just crossed the Sea of Galilee, He's approached by a man named Jairus. Jairus is an important figure in his community because he's a leader of a synagogue. He asked Jesus to heal his sick daughter. Now in this time and this place, the loss of a daughter would probably be of little consequence. So we know that Jairus is an exceptionally loving father. But everyone has a story and everyone has needs, and in the large crowd is a woman with a great need to be healed. In this time and place, a woman would not dare to touch a rabbi, but she boldly touches Jesus' cloak, and the unnamed woman is healed. After confronting and blessing the woman, Jesus goes on his way and heals Jairus' unnamed daughter. The scripture reveals that the touch of Jesus can heal. Listen then to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 through 34. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed Jesus and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. 
when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, why do you make such a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. Jesus strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This ends our second scripture reading for today. You know, over the years, I have done a number of sermons based on the gospel lesson for today. Mark's gospel, chapter 5, relates the stories of Jairus and his daughter and the woman who suffered from a hemorrhage. Both of these stories are about healing. At the beginning of this passage, we read that Jairus' daughter is very sick. In fact, she's near death. Later, people report to Jairus that his daughter is dead. In between these two reports is a story about a woman who has suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years, which would be about half a lifetime for people of that era with a life expectancy of 25 years. I know this, that this woman suffered more than an inconvenience. In Jewish society at the time of Jesus, women who were bleeding had to be kept away from others and untouched. The fact is that this woman may not have had anyone touch her for 12 years. Now, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have just gone through a year of limited touch or no touch at all. People have been frustrated, anxious, and depressed because of a lack of human contact that they have not had in the past year. But we have telephones and radios, televisions, and many of us have computers that help us in some way in an audiovisual contact with other people. Now this unnamed woman in the gospel had none of these, and she was isolated 12 times as long as any of us have been. You can forget about the woman suffering on account of the hemorrhage. The isolation and loneliness would alone be enough suffering to drive her crazy. So because of my awareness of the lack of touching during the COVID pandemic, I noticed this woman's lack of human contact. Before I had focused you know, on the healings, but now I realized just how important touching was for those people to be healed. So let's, let's focus on touch as we look at this gospel lesson. Now this is an interesting passage since there is a story within a story. Jairus' daughter begins and ends the passage but the story of the woman with a hemorrhage is planted right in the middle. It all begins when Jesus has just crossed the Sea of Galilee and is met on the other shore with a great crowd of people. One person in particular stands out because he makes his way through the crowd and falls at Jesus' feet. The man is Jairus, a leader in one of the local synagogues. He is a man of authority and influence in his community. But here he falls at the feet of an itinerant preacher and begs him to come to heal his daughter who is close to death. Jairus asks Jesus to come and lay his hands on her so she may live. Now the laying on of hands goes back into prehistory. To heal someone or to convey authority upon them people would touch the person with hands to give them power. It is long believed that energy can be transmitted by one person's touching another person with one's hands. Faith healers do it. Clergy do it when someone is ordained. 
Exorcists do it to put God in a person and to move the devil out. The laying on of hands is believed to impart God's power to heal and to do good. Jairus seems to be an unusual man since he has gone to great lengths to find healing for his daughter. In Jesus' time, girls were of little concern for most people. Jesus is also different from the prevailing attitudes of society and expresses that the woman and children are important and have equal worth to the men and adults. Jesus does not hesitate to respond, and he sets off to heal Jairus' daughter. As they are walking along, surrounded by a large crowd, a woman who has suffered for 12 years from bleeding approaches Jesus secretly. She may at once have been well off, because we are told that she has spent all her money on doctors who took her money, but they did not make her well. In fact, she's getting worse. She had heard about Jesus doing miraculous healings and figured that she didn't have anything to lose, so she stalked up behind him, hoping to just touch his cloak. She was hoping that even a slight brush of his clothes would heal her while leaving Jesus unaware of what she had done. As I said before, a woman bleeding was considered impure and touching her or being touched by her would make someone impure as well. She touched his cloak and she immediately was healed. But Jesus was aware that power had gone out of him and he called out, who touched my clothes? The disciples are baffled because there are people just crowding around him, touching him all the time. But the woman wanted to be healed, and when she made contact with his clothes, healing power was transferred from Jesus to her. It is interesting that Jesus could feel power flowing from him, but he did not know who received the power. The woman came to Jesus in fear and trembling and confessed everything. Now she comes to Jesus afraid because she has violated the law in touching him and legally should receive punishment. Then Jesus responds in an affectionate way by calling her daughter, not woman, as he does in many other instances, other occasions. Perhaps Jesus is impressed by her courage and by her faith in him. And he says, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. The woman goes off being healed of more than her hemorrhage. With her bleeding gone, she could now return to her family and her neighbors and have a normal life. She can touch people. People can touch her. She will soon be healed socially which will lead to being healed emotionally and psychologically. She will be able to return to the synagogue and the temple where she will find healing spiritually through the religious rites. Now the healing of Jairus' daughter is even more profound. As Jesus was speaking to the woman, people arrive and tell Jairus that his daughter is dead. Jesus goes, to the girl anyway, telling them to only believe. He dismisses everyone except the parents and three of his disciples. Jesus takes the girl's hand and tells her to get up. And she does. Jesus raises her from the dead. The touch of Jesus brings healing. The touch of Jesus gives life. Touch is one of the five senses that people have. Touch is one of the first senses to develop and is one of the last senses to go. There are numerous definitions of touch. Touch can be a verb. It can also be a noun. Touch is most often, however, used to describe skin-to-skin -skin contact. But we can be touched in many different ways yet they all refer to some kind of contact and communication. 
Medical doctors and psychologists tell us that skin-to-skin -skin contact is necessary for mental, emotional, and physical health. If you do not get enough physical touch, you can become stressed, anxious, and depressed. The body produces a hormone which is called cortisol when under stress. And with cortisol, the heart rate increases, blood pressure rises, muscle tension tightens, and it negatively affects the immune and digestive systems. Studies show that more Americans live alone today than ever before. That generally means less physical contact. One in four Americans report not having a single person to talk to about important issues in their lives. Loneliness has increased 16% in the last decade and loneliness has skyrocketed in this last year due to isolation and social distancing. We are a psychological and physical mess because of COVID-19. We all need the healing touch of Jesus' cloak or to have him take us by the hand. Most of you are watching this service now because you are seeking the touch of God in your life. You have heard or you have even experienced for yourselves that God can heal you, to guide you and give you comfort, give you insight and inspire you. When any of these things happens to you, you can say that God has touched me. To be touched by God is to be in contact and communication with God in some way. The most frequent way of seeking contact and communication with God is called prayer. We may call prayer listening to God, but it also is a means of being touched by God. Other, other means of trying to contact and communicate with God are the sacraments of baptism and communion, meditation, contemplation, reading scripture, singing, and many others. Through these pathways, we can receive the touch of God, an experience of feeling God's spirit connect or touch your spirit or even your body, your mind, or your heart. God can give you a healing touch to your physical body like the woman with the hemorrhage or to your mind to heal your confusion and depression or to your heart to heal your anxiety, fear, and grief, or to your spirit, to heal your longing, loneliness, and despair over sin. You do not have to sneak up on Jesus like the woman with the hemorrhage, nor do you have to be a far, as far gone as Jairus' daughter in order to feel the touch of God bringing you healing and bringing you life. However, maybe you do need to be as determined to receive the touch of Jesus as the woman with a hemorrhage or as Jairus was for his daughter. The scripture testifies that God is always present with us, no matter where we are. But to be touched by God requires a bit more openness and effort on our part. So please, Open your hearts and minds to receive the touch of God and make a greater effort to reach out to God and make that connection. We all need God's healing touch. May God and you be in touch. Amen. So let us pray. Dear God, there are many kinds of touch. In whatever form touch may take, we ask for it to be positive and not harmful. We open our hearts so that we may allow the plight and the suffering of others to touch our emotions and to move us to help those in need. We open our hearts to receive the touch of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Move our hearts to be aware of your presence and to follow where you lead. Touch our minds so that we may receive wisdom and be inspired to greater acts of service. 
Touch our souls with your grace so that we may know peace and contentment, trusting in your care for us. Lord, there are tensions that are high in the Middle East. We pray that both Palestinians and Jews will realize that peace and mutual respect is far better than trying to destroy each other. Please help all people who are in conflict to overcome their differences and love one another. May we bind up the brokenness in this world. And we continue to pray for our medical and emergency people. We ask you to bless them and we ask you to bring healing to our country and to the world. For all who are ill and injured, we ask for your healing presence among them. For those who are grieving, we ask for your comfort upon them. God, you are the source of all healing and wholeness. Please heal us and make us whole. We pray for the leaders of nations and states to lead their people, the people under their responsibility with justice and equal concern, no matter their race, ethnicity, religion, or economic status. May they be truly concerned for their people's health and well-being rather than their own political gains. May they follow the guidance of your Holy Spirit and love their people. Thank you, God, for your love, which says we belong to you. You love us before we even have the thought of it. With your love in our minds and hearts, we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as one people. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Sometimes the simplest statement can be the most powerful. Theologians can make complex and intricate essays on the subject of faith, but it is the trust in our hearts that God cares about us and will be present with us that is most important. This is a faith that the simplest child or the most learned scholar can have to know that Jesus loves them. Many people have sung these words when faced with dark times in their lives and have found reassurance. So now we sing, Jesus Loves Me, number 327 in the New Century Hymnal.
I hope in some way, whether great or small, that this service has touched you in a positive manner. I hope that in some way you have allowed God to touch you, being and that you have had a connection with the divine. Sometimes we connect with music. Sometimes we are moved by prayers. Sometimes we are touched by the reading of scripture. And sometimes there is something in the comments about the word that makes a link within our minds, our hearts, and even our souls. God's spirit is ever present. God's spirit can give you insight to solve your problems. And the spirit can inspire you to act with courage and strength. The spirit can enable you to do things that you never thought possible. The spirit can provide you with comfort and, gu and to guide you on your way through life. God's spirit has always been with you and will always be with you from all the rest of time. So go out in the world with courage and good faith. Strive to be positive and to help others in constructive ways. Remember, we all make mistakes. We all do foolish things. So be patient with yourselves. Remember that God forgives. So persevere in doing good. Be kind and considerate of one another. Spread the good news of God's love. May it touch all of our hearts. God bless you all. Amen. And now we have some announcements for Pilgrim. Today, Sunday, June 27th, we will have a video fellowship on our computers and mobile devices at 11 a.m. You should have received your invitation in your email this past Thursday. Pilgrim's building remains closed to the public through the month of July. The executive ministry team is monitoring the Ingham County COVID numbers. There are two criteria for reopening the church that they are watching closely. We are looking for the number of COVID cases to be less than five per 100,000 for three consecutive weeks and for the vaccination rate to be over 70%. The number of new cases has fallen, but the vaccination rate is still not high enough. Please encourage your friends and family to be vaccinated if they have not done so already. The reopening committee will be meeting to discuss whether or not we need to amend the criteria. Please continue your prayers for the health of our county and the time when we can gather safely for worship together in our building. We are planning a drive-in worship service for next Sunday, July 4th. July 4th will be a communion service. Our mobile fellowship will start up visiting our members and friends on Saturday mornings again at, on July 10th. That is a week from this coming Saturday. Whoever wants to go visiting meets in the church parking lot at 945 on Saturday morning. Anyone is welcome to come along. Please call or email me, Karen Davis, if you want more information. The EMT would like to thank everyone who continues to bless Pilgrim by sending in their offerings and donations. That is the news from Pilgrim for now. God bless you all and have a good week.